There's a lot of movies based on internet characters. This one happens to be another one. Nostalgia critic guy, remember it so you don't have to. Let's talk about. Sorry, it's just when I talk about certain people, they have a bad habit of bursting into the studio mid sentence. So, with that said, let's talk about Guillermo del Toro. Yeah! Hello, del Toro. Buenos dias, human. I hope you don't mind I have my monster kick down your door. Is he housebroken? <laughs> He broke into your house! <laughs> no, seriously, he shit all over the floor. Okay, can you get rid of him, please? Only if done in artistically poetic way. I don't care, just do it! Certainly. Damien, the son, is a lie. Del Toro, that was amazing. Yes, here's an award for something. Oh, gracias, gracias. So what's your next flawless project? Well, for my next project, I decide to do something a little different. It's called Monsters Are Cool and Bad People Are Bad. That is different. It already sounds brilliant. Brilliantly brilliant. Except I just decided I do not want to. Yeah, it's beneath you. You're worth oh, so yeah. much more. Gracias. Gracias. You're amazing. Gracias. It's incredible. Gracias. Yeah, Del Toro is kind of a hot thing right now. What started out as a fan base of movie monster lovers has turned into a pop culture phenomenon, with people praising the artistic style and dramatic substance of a true visionary. And when I say visionary, I mean he has a very distinct look and feel, usually focusing on the weird outcast being the heroes and large aggressive forces being the villain. You always know when you're watching a Del Toro movie. But in terms of stories and characters, a lot of them seem a little familiar. Not in a bad way, I mean the inspired sources are still cool things to take from, it's just for a guy praised for his originality, a lot of what he does doesn't seem that new. Because of this, I just don't see his movies as perfection. <gasps> Santa Maria! You dare blasphemy Del Toro? He won Best Picture for The Shape of Water. He's changing the Hollywood system. You really think that was the best picture of the year and it wasn't just the Academy virtue signaling? In what way? It's about loving whoever you want. The close-minded conservative is the villain. It was directed by a minority. And Octavia Spencer was in it. Maybe we should have rethought this argument. I don't think Del Toro is bad, honestly. I just don't think he's the second coming of Jesus either. Speaking of which, I have decided to do Haunted Mansion movie again. Yay! Yeah, maybe not. Oh, it wasn't worth it. Yeah, you could do better. I don't know. I feel like the best equivalent of what Del Toro can achieve as a director can be summed up in Blade 2. He directed, directed that? that? I directed that? Oh, oh yeah, I did, I did that. And that it was, was brilliant. A masterpiece in its own right. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> what smells like monster feces? Released in 2002, this is not Del Toro's best movie by a long shot, but it does deliver exactly what it promises, has some cool visuals along the way, and is by no means perfect, but still has a unique passion that makes it a fulfilling experience. It's a solid movie, despite there being a lot of strange, goofy, and over-the-top elements. But that's also part of what makes it so much fun. It's Del Toro just kinda doing his thing, giving us weird outcasts, lots of gore, cool monsters, and dark shadows for them to hide in. In my opinion, it's the perfect movie to show Del Toro's repeated strengths. But it also clearly shows his repeated weaknesses, too. Not that they're overbearing, but they are a bit easier to spot in something not quite as award grabby. So we're gonna look at this zany flick because it's one of the few Del Toro movies people can accept as just a zany flick. Let's start ice skating uphill. This is. Stop! I have decided to do Hobbit Part 4. <sighs> Eh, maybe not. Good call. Yeah, it's not worth your genius. Here, have an award anyway. <laughs> Gracias! I'm sure you did something brilliant in the last 10 minutes. <laughs> oh. 
Blade 2. The film opens at a blood bank in the Czech Republic as a sickly looking man named Nomak, played by Luke Goss, is eager to get involved in the blood biz, so to speak. Where did you get that scar on your chin? Childhood accident. A little boy made fun of me for being in Tekken, so I accidentally punched his childhood. It looks like, Big Shock, these are vampires, and Nomak has a rare blood type they want to drain out of him. What is this? This is a good news, bad news scenario, Jared. Bad news. <laughs> for you. Oh god, I'm in an Elm Street movie, aren't I? Please say I don't go out via power glove! But Nomak attacks, as it appears he's a different kind of monster. Everyone says that after seeing Vampire Academy. Cut to Blade, played again by Wesley Snipes, getting ready for his next mission as the credits roll. They call me the Daywalker. When they're not calling me the Tax Dodger. There, got that joke out of the way, now we can be friends again. He says he's looking for Whistler, which is confusing, seeing how we saw him kill himself in the last film. But if there's anything David S. Goyer is great at, it's giving characters satisfying deaths. Hey, Walker, kid! Stop him! He chases down some vampires who might have some info on where to find him. <laughs> but not that one. He presumably knew nothing. Now, Guillermo. What was your thought process on focusing on the fake effect for so long? Yes, was it a statement to say that movies need to have better effects? No, it's just a rush production. Even I don't like the effect. Whew, I just got chills. Inspiringly inspired! <laughs> it's true. Dick! You're a dick! I'm officially starting a petition that Wesley Snipes never change. So what's the bullshit reason Whistler is still whistling Dixie? Makes you wonder, did the vampire killing bullets in Blade's gun not work? Was Whistler not a vampire yet? Even if so, I think a vampire killing bullet would probably do the same thing to a 60 year old man. Did the vampires drop by Blade's hideout after Blade defeated Frost to get Whistler? Weird ass strategy to say the least. Okay, let's be honest, we all know what actually happened here. Now walk away. Eh, shit, I don't have the balls to do this. Um, that was me. I fired the gun. I'm dead. Dropping the gun to the floor because I'm dead. Don't bring your delicious blood-filled body back here. Ah, oh, dookie. One of the vampires takes Blade to where they're holding Whistler while they're doing blood coke. Nah, nah, nah. Well, as Blade makes himself at home and kicks some ass. Though honestly, the stunts aren't quite as good as the first time. Ah! That was literally a hop and a skip. Why'd he even do that? It is still fun though, because it's still Blade badassing it up. That's the sound of a man who just remembered he's Wesley Snipes. He finds Whistler in that thing from Empire Strikes Back, as Blade takes him to his hideout and gives him a cure that hopefully works. He has a flashback of his poignant death that now means nothing, as he opens the blinds and finds he's back to normal. Or as normal as Mr. Grumpy Pants can be. How do you feel? Like hammered shit. How Chris Christopherson usually greets the morning. He's introduced to Blade's new gear man, or gear boy, Scud. Played by, get this, Norman Reedus. Yeah, that Norman Reedus. Josh, you can call me Scud though. That's what he does. Laugh all you want, but you give that man a baby, every vagina on the internet turns into that crazy lady from Roger Rabbit. But you want the weirdest cameo in the movie? It's not from Rita's. It's not from Christopherson. It's not even from any of the memorable cast. It's from the Powerpuff Girls. For whatever reason, the Powerpuff Girls are the only thing on TV in this universe. I have nothing against them, but what the hell do they have to do with Blade? Like, at all? Seriously, Del Toro, what's up with that? Yes, why that breathtaking choice? No, <laughs> that is a very funny story. See, New Line is owned by Warner Bros. Warner Brothers owns Cartoon Network. So, I just thought it was a funny show. As do we all. <laughs> I love Buttercup. Ah, if only Blade had a crossover with the Powerpuff Girls. He shall be gone! Yay! Yeah. Yeah, maybe not. Absolutely not. <laughs> Waste of time. Yeah. 
Vampires are detected in their hideout, though, and they gear up for a fight. I don't know what's funnier. The fact that they land right in front of Whistler expecting not to be seen? Or the fact that Whistler lets him take him down with virtually no resistance? He looks like he's patiently waiting for someone to kick his ass. Please take away my gun. Please punch me. Please kill me for real next time in Blade 3. Okay, are you really using your sword handle to fight me, dick? You're a dick! <laughs> this sword fight more than makes up for the so-so fight in the beginning. That is except for one thing. Oh, sorry, I must have switched to Ladybug and Cat Noir. What the hell is this? These effects are abysmal, even for back then. It goes from some really kick-ass sword fighting to some of the worst CG these movies have ever seen. And that's saying quite a bit. A fight between Woody and Buzz would look more convincing than this. And I just remembered I can use my voice, so I'm doing that three minutes into the fight. Smart. We represent the ruling body of the vampire nation. They're offering you a truce. I don't know why you took us sneaking in and blacking out your cameras the wrong way. Take off your mask. Aw, oh, they've taken the smeg. They ask Blade for help as something is apparently killing off vampires and they need his assistance to track them down. So they bring him to the capital of the Vampire Nation and introduce him to their overlord. It has been said, be proud of your enemy and enjoy his success. It has also been said you're a douche. I like that one better. Carol Coonan. You're human. Barely. I'm a lawyer. I hate how much I love that joke. They say a mutation of the vampire gene found in Nomak turned him into a creature called a Reaper, who feeds on vampires and or turns them into Reapers as well. You want me to hunt them? For you? When they have finished with us, what do you think they'll turn on next? Twilight Fair. Well, obviously, after that, human. With a brief appetizer of Johnny Depp. So, be a man, what do you think? Sounds like a plan. What do you really think? They're gonna fuck us the first chance they get. Can I point out that dozens have signed that petition since I announced it a few minutes ago? They agree to play along, hoping they'll get deeper into the vampire world than they've ever been before. Thus, they're introduced to the Blood Pack, a unit trained to hunt Blade, but now they have to work with him. You smell that? Something smells amazingly awesome. Oh, could it be the badassness of Ron Perlman? Yeah! See. Pearl Man is the man pearl in every cinematic oyster he's in. Always stealing the show with his tough, aggressive attitude, his army tank of cool cannot be contained. Here, he's a member of the Blood Pack, and one of the main antagonists of Blade, building up a tension-filled rivalry. Oh my god, this is gonna be awesome! Indeed it is. So, what's his first line? Me and the uh, gang were wondering, can you blush? Uh -oh. here we go, Poppy. Did that cracker son of a bitch just say what I thought he said? No, 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 no. What he said was, can you blush? I think that's what he thought he said. Yeah, that's what I thought he said. Yeah, isn't it great? You see, the blood pack, they all get behind him. Got behind him? Yeah, you know, to show how bad they are. In a fun way. <laughs> Actually, there's some debate about what this line actually means. I'll admit at first, I didn't fully get it, so I went online to look it up. Not surprisingly, others can't quite figure it all out either. On the one hand, it's clearly a callback to the racial slur, even down to Blade insulting him back by calling him Adolf. Adolf here gets the first shot. But there's other black vampires this guy has been around. Hell, there's even one right in the room as he says it. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Some have speculated it's actually a reverse of the insult. Because as vampires, they can't blush. But Blade is half human, so perhaps he can. The idea would be him being able to blush would be the mocking point. And so they're using the slur as a flipped around way of insulting him. Bottom line, if we have to talk this much about an evil line in order to understand it, well, how would an actual funny evil genius put it? If you have to explain a joke, that is no joke! Exactly, it's a shitty line for a character you're not supposed to like anyway. Is that about right? I just wanted you to hate the guy. 
Do you? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Then shoot the hell out and enjoy the movie. Okay. But I'm taking one of your awards back. I have more awards than socks. You'll see. Blade doesn't like the confusing insult, so he places an explosive device in the back of Perlman's head. You've been taking orders from me. Any questions? Say a vampire bites a werewolf and he has to hold on to his blood in order to survive because of the blood moon, can he blush? Blade asks that he be taken to where vampires feed, thinking they'll find the reapers there. He's taken to a spot, but doesn't see any of the vampire markings. Have a closer look. Because of you, we've had to rethink our habits. So let me show you exactly how to find them. We're really stupid. But hell with this shit, let's get to the coolest part of any movie like this, weapon porn! This hypervelocity steak gun spits out a silver steak. pneumatic syringe feet. delivery. 45 9mm caliber. Oh all yeah, oh tell capsules. me how it works! Vials are filled with an anticoagulant called EDTA. All the foil capsules at the tip. Hot a couple of these babies to a nitro vacuum. Oh yeah, oh you're gonna kill some shit with that, aren't ya? Cartridge ejects, automatic reload. Modified the gun's entry light, UV filled. Enough explosives to level a city block. One punch with this, you blow your target. Oh, it's like the movie becomes the only manual instructions you're allowed to read. Whistler is told to stay outside, though, as they think he's too old to keep up. So the blood pack's calling the shots now, huh? The sad part is, they're kind of right. Whistler is a little bit of a pain in the ass in this, complaining how people are doing things wrong, complaining how he's left out of the loop. It's like watching cable news, just seeing an old guy bitch and moan about everything. Where'd you dig up this shit, bird? Sucking blood clots for two years. Yeah. Enough of their world. Some jerk off fucking with my life's work. What the hell's that supposed to be? I built this operation, you ass white. Some of us can't see in the dark. No, it ain't a funny head. book. How rude. This shit breaks because they're no longer. Fuck you doing? What are you crying about? Sunscreen you don't have cups. to live here. Sunscreen. So Blade and the Blood Pack enter a club where vampires hang out. You gotta be kidding me. I mean a place where vampires rave. I have never seen that since the first movie. Yeah, I have no idea why I said that line. While some partake in literal tongue lashing, the Reapers are getting ready to strike. Mother's milk. No, really, in eight years, I'm totally gonna be a sex symbol, but none of my girlfriends believe me. Nomad captures the Overlord's daughter, Nisa, played by Lenore Varela, but Blade intercepts him. What am I to you? Is the enemy of my enemy my friend? Or my enemy? Let's compromise and say frenemy. You look good, penis dick! <laughs> that might be the silliest reaction to a gunshot I've ever seen. That's more how a cartoon mascot reacts when he finds his favorite cereal. I'm Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs! Cuckoo! The other Reapers start attacking too, as they don't have much time to catch them. Daylight. Stallone, 96. Underrated classic. Red box it tonight. Stallone don't do jack shit, man. Don't waste the bullets. Also aiming. It would have worked better if you were aiming, jackass. <laughs> so I had to admit from a design standpoint, the Reapers are kind of boring. They're just bald vampires that make zombie sounds. Couldn't something make them a little bit more unique? Well, that raised the awesome to Jesus surfing on a dinosaur! Meanwhile, Blake catches up with Nomak, and these two hate each other so much they literally punch each other while falling in slow-mo. Oh, I can't wait for the ground to finish you off! I want you dead now! The sun starts to burn him though as Blade wins this round. And I have to admit, the action and the monsters in this are pretty solid. It's not anything spectacular, but you really are turning in a fun, dark, imaginative flick. Well, it is great when you have fans who appreciate fun, dark, imaginative entertainment. Oh yeah, that's always how it starts. Tim Burton? One minute you're the cinematic master of dark fantasies, the next you're the filler material in between Disney projects. You think you're the new auteur of gothic whimsy? <laughs> And I've been wearing a black shirt. Uh, look, Tim, it seems like you've had a little bit too much to drink, so why don't you... You think they're gonna stay with you? Your fans that see you as a poetic artist? They'll turn their back on you the minute you make a Mars Attacks! Tim, why don't you go direct Beetlejuice 2? Is that all you think I am? 
A rehash of shit that's already been done? No, it's literally the next movie you signed up for. Oh, yeah, I forgot I even agreed to that. Tim, uh, we have a review we're in the middle of, so if you could... I used to be the big shit! Me! I was the one people turned to for weird superheroes and bizarre creatures! You just wait, Totoro! This is your future! Your face here, baby! Ha 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 ha! Oh god, someone called Danny DeVito to pick me up! Don't worry, Del Toro, that's not gonna be you. Yeah, you're not gonna be remaking old properties. Minus fumes, Pinocchio. Well, shit. Hey, you can come see us at Wizard World Chicago, August 22nd to the 25th. That's me, Brad Jones, Rob, Tamara, Malcolm. You can see us all there, and you can get 20% off your tickets by putting in the promo code AWESOME20. Also, don't forget to check us out in another cinema snob movie. Don't you think more films need cannibal clowns? I know you think more films need cannibal clowns. We'll go see us and cannibal clowns in another cinema snob movie. And check us out at Wizard World Chicago, though not as many cannibal clowns. I don't think. So Whistler finds one of the Reapers over a hole, and they suspect that's where they'll find the rest of them. After a pretty cool examination scene with one of them, Nisa tries to figure out why Blade is so cold to the people that for years tried to kill him. Yeah, weird, right? The way you talk to them, us, why do you hate us so much? We just want to do every terrible thing you could hate a person for! You know the thirst better than any of us. The only difference between us is that I made peace with what I am a long time ago. That and I would have said no to U.S. Marshals. Tommy Lee Jones was in a chicken suit, for God's sake. So they gear up for round two as they journey underground and hunt the Reapers. But the vampires betray Whistler and figure killing him would even the score for them losing their team member. I'll leave you two lovebirds some time to yourselves. We spotted a group in the East Tunnel. Huh, makes you wonder why Whistler didn't use his radio while he was getting the shit beat out of him. Hey, Blade. Ow! I hate to be a bother. Damn it! But can you get me a pound of aspirin? Oh! And a blowfish to stick up your ass for agreeing to this bullshit mission? Jesus, that hurts! But Whistler reaps the benefit, so to speak, as the Reapers kill his attacker and he regroups with the rest of the team. Ah! Ah! Take that, son! Oh, there's a Reaper there. That's lucky. You obviously do not know who you are fucking with! I stole a rule from Prince in a Michael Jackson video! Google that shit, asshole, from goddamn Prince! Now look at this epic shot! Boy, for saying bullets don't work, they sure do work. Blade sets off a giant case of light bombs, which I have no idea how light bombs work, but apparently they can travel down tunnels. Of course, water is impenetrable to... Light! Blade says it, so now it's science! Nomak finds Whistler and says he'll let him live if he delivers a message to Blade. I'm a gazillion years old, what makes you think I can hear you? Why are you whispering anyway, you afraid the Ninja Turtles will intercept? And he says burn bad, so Blade gives her some of his blood to save her. And seriously, who would have thought you couldn't trust a vampire, huh? You've done a great job. Not that great. <clears throat> They wake up in a blood chamber at the vampire headquarters where Whistler tells Nomak's secret that he was created by the vampires as a genetic means to get rid of their weaknesses. You want to explain how Nomak got a hold of this ring? I would have thought that was obvious at this point. Man, even the Overlord is mocking how predictable the script is. I give it to him, of course, a gift. From father to son. Well, that angers me so much, I'm gonna pout and run away. You're not so cool, I can do that too. Um... Help. Oh! He tries detonating the bomb on Perlman's head, but it looks like Scud betrayed him as well and says the bomb is a fake. God, vampires, lawyers, guys named Scud, who can you trust in this world? What do you think about that, man? Two things. I've been on to you. Two. It's not a dud. Aw, oh, dick. You're a dick! Two things. One, if you knew about it, how come you never used it to your advantage? Two, why use the bomb on easily the most non-threatening person in the room? Probably because of three, it's just cool to see Daryl get blowed up. Oh, now they'll never finish Silent Hills. 
they not blade out and say his blood, like always, is the missing key to their evil plans. Thus, he spends a good chunk of the climax on a table half alive. <laughs> As guards were not paid to look slightly to our left. Or a teeny bit up. Oh, we suck. We suck. But it looks like Whistler breaks free and sneaks in to save Blade. Blade needs blood, though, so he's dropped into Willy Wonka's blood fountain where he gets his strength back. Ladies and gentlemen, the coolest usage of a Crystal Method song ever. I guess we'll just stand back here until it's our turn. But why? Just take in the song, man. Take in the song. Gotta love how after all this martial arts, Blade takes out the final guy with a WWE body slam. Well, like my daddy said right before he killed my mom, want anything done right, you gotta do it yourself. I am instantly sad I'm never gonna know this character's backstory. Blade stops the sword mid-whoosh and gives the call back. Can you blush? Oh, did you take this erase thing? I want to know being a half-breed. Oh, that was awesome. Is it possible to jizz a rainbow? Because I just did. The Overlord tries to escape, but Nisa traps him for risking her life as well as her men and her brother. Speaking of which... Seriously, we can cure ugly in the near future. That was the wrong thing to say, wasn't it? Yeah, okay, lesson learned. Another fantastically aged CG effect in three, two... <laughs> Well, now we know what happens when the characters from Reboot wrestle. Blade finally finishes him off and tends to the dying Nisa. I want to see the sun. Okay, but don't look right at it or you'll do some serious damage. <laughs> Little vampire hunter humor there. And you're dead. Meanwhile, in London, the vampire that told Blade where to find Whistler is off to a peep show. <laughs> hey, what the hell? I ordered a naked Whistly Snipes lookalike. Naked! Oh shit! <laughs> Eh, looks like my horoscope was correct. Blade 2 is a whole lot of fun. Certainly clunky at times, but the right amount of inventive stunts, monsters, gore, and characters to make it pretty enjoyable. It's a creatively serviceable film, which is what I think Del Toro is good at turning in. Like I said before, I don't think this is anywhere near his best. I'd probably say something like Pan's Labyrinth is closer to that. But it's a good representation of him taking a genre, giving it his spin, and turning out something pretty decent. To some, Del Toro might be a trailblazing genius. To me, he's just a cool guy who makes cool movies. And all I gotta say is, what the hell is wrong with that? I'm the Nostalgia Critic, I remit. Hey, where'd everybody go? So, what is your next project? Well, it's about an outcast who's constantly shit on and a bunch of weird stuff happens to. Now that is an amazing coincidence. Huh? Cause mine is about outcasts who constantly get shit on and amazingly weird stuff happens to them. Oh, really? No, uh, maybe not. Do any of the characters wear black? Do you, Do you even, even need, need to, to ask? ask? <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, you all doing okay? Oh, it's wonderful. Once they realize that they're just trying to rip off every monster movie ever made, they became best friends. Wait, we already knew that. Yeah, I thought I was about convincing you the fans. That's what changed everything. Yeah, but that would mean it meaning that we're wrong, and the fans are never wrong. Uh. Ah. Well, whatever agreement you came to, I hope it results in a lot of creativity in the future. Hey, how about this? Godzilla, but it's a metaphor for an angsty loner. And he's wearing black. I knew one day you would come. Gracias, mi amigo. Gracias. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, I remember it. Whatever it is. I'm going to call it on now. No, no, don't you give up on me! Don't you give up on me! I need to become the shape of water. You're human. Barely. I'm a lawyer. <gasps> Santa Maria! You dare? <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
Hey, Doug Walker here. The Center for Enriched Living is this week's charity shout out and uh, for the show that we do every once in a while called What You Can Do. We're not only showing, uh, you know, where you can donate to this wonderful place, but we're also showing how you can volunteer. Uh, this is a place in Illinois where they specialize in uh, helping people with disabilities, uh, all sorts of various disabilities. And uh, this building is just amazing. And uh, we, we did this whole episode of, uh, with the show what you can do and uh, we're gonna show you a little snippet of it here and we're gonna have the um, the link that shows where you can go to donate but also think about volunteering as well if you're in the Illinois area uh, this place is so cool so kind so warm and uh, go ahead and check out the video as well uh, it's just a really really cool place here's a little clip for you my name is Harriet Levy and I'm the CEO of the Center for Enriched Living. We're located in Riverwoods. We provide social enrichment programs to people all ages with developmental disabilities. As you can see all the artwork on our walls it is done by our members. We're really proud of it. It's showcased throughout our entire building. So. Man, the, the colors on these are so nice. Like, look yeah. at that. Look at the color on that. We were established in 1968 uh, when things weren't that great for people any age with developmental disabilities. Oftentimes they were in institutions. There wasn't a lot of promise and hope for our families. Uh, in fact, we hear over and over again how families would hear upon the birth of their child, well, they'll never learn anything, they'll never grow, they'll never be able to do anything. You sh would be better off putting them in an institution. Well, we found that to be not true. From children, it grew to teens, to young adults, to adults, and now we serve all ages from, from youth uh, pretty much 12 years up to if someone's 100, they could come to the center. We asked our families and our members, what is it that you want? What are, what are you looking for? And one mother said, nobody's ever asked me that before. Wow. My child has always gotten the hand-me-down classroom with no windows, in the back of the school, in the basement of the school, with torn carpeting. And for you to ask, and she was in tears when she responded to our, to our survey. People need to be valued, not undervalued. When you raise the bar on those expectations, people achieve to that level. Whether or not you have a disability, that's how it works. Chairs, um, or table heights, you'll see the cutouts underneath the counters. You'll see everything's kind of lowered as well, so there's access to the microwave, access to the oven, the indirect lighting, and the soft floor, so you'll, you'll walk through, you won't hear your footsteps, things like that. So it's. It's kind of accessible oh, you're for right. I yeah. didn't notice that. It's accessible for a lot of different people. We're we're here to serve the community, so we appreciate whatever you could do for us. Click on that link. It's right there. Click on it. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, Doug. Thank you so much.